Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay. So last time we left, we were talking about division. And specifically, I had hopefully given you a fond reminder of being in third grade where there's M&Ms and the teachers saying do some math with, with M&Ms. Terrific. So the, the question that we ended with boiled down to the following. Divide 20 by 3. <clears throat> well, the process for doing that is long division. So you write the 20 in the house and the 3 outside of the house. And then 3 wants to come in. How many times can 3 go into 20? 6 times, right? And then 6 times 3 is 18. You subtract that much and you have 2. So each one of those numbers has a name. What's the name for 6? This is the quotient. And what's the name for 2? The remainder. Okay, so notably, the remainder always has to be less than the thing you're dividing by, which is called the divisor. Quotient's always, uh, sorry, the remainder always has to be less. You can, you can understand why. So in the first place, that's the rule. But to understand in a real world example why the remainder's always got to be less than the divisor, is imagine that you were in, in that situation. That the teacher had said, okay class, everyone has 20, 20 M&Ms, and I want you to make as many groups of three as possible, and you can eat all of the groups of three that you're able to make. So suppose a child has made five groups. How many has the child taken? Fifteen. Will the child stop there and say, okay, I guess that's all I can do? <laughs> no, right? Because <laughs> there's five more. Not gonna leave those, you're not going to leave those three on the table. And if you don't like the M&M example that I can make it a little more real for you and say, well, what if we were playing a game and I had 20 groups of bills, each group having $1,000 in them, and I said, you can take as many groups as you wish. As long as you, you can take as many groups of size 3 as you wish. Would you take five groups of size 3? <laughs> nah, right? <laughs> you wouldn't leave any money on the table. You'd take six groups of size 3. <laughs> okay, so... So, a slightly uh, more complicated version of this. Divide, say, 175 uh, by 3. Well, it's the same procedure, 175 by 3, but now I want to emphasize different aspects of it. So the way it goes, the way the procedure goes, is you always consider the greatest, uh, the highest order digit outside versus the highest order digit inside. So the highest, the, the most significant digit outside is 3, the most significant digit inside is 1. How many times does 3 go into 1? Zero. Zero times. It doesn't. So that means that we have to do what? Next. Yeah, take another digit. And now ask, okay then, how many times does 3 go into 17? Five times. So then you write a 5 vertically above whatever digit that you were able to take from. So 5 goes right here. <coughs> And then that 5 realizes it's in a long division problem and says, oh no, and then jumps off the house, says, forget it, I'm leaving. Jumps off the house, <laughs> hits the 3 on the way down. You do 5 times 3 is 15. You write it under the 17 and do what? Okay. Subtract. And again, we're, no, we're ignoring the rightmost digit. So 17 minus 15 is 2. And notably... Notably, 2 is less than 3. If we had taken 4 groups, if we had taken 4 groups, this would be 3 times 4 is 12, and 17 minus 12 would be 5, and that would be too much. This number 
has to be less than that number. Otherwise, you've made a mistake. Okay, then you carry down the 5. So the 5 is carried down. And now you ask, okay, well, how many times does 3 go into 25? 8. 8 times. So you write an 8 here. And then the 8 jumps off the house, hits the 3 on the way down, multiplies to be 24, subtract this much, and then you have 1. Now what? Well, if we're performing, if we're dividing integers, then the procedure now terminates. Because now you have just one, and there's no more digits to, to take from. Okay. So, from this computation, you can read for me, read off for me, what is the quotient? Fifty-eight. And what is the remainder? One. And all four of the numbers, that is to say, we started with two numbers, 1, 7, 5, and 3. And from these numbers, we made two more numbers, 5, 8, and 1. These four numbers can be combined into a single sentence. 1, 7, 5 is 5, 8 multiplied by 3 plus 1. That is to say, if you take 175 M&Ms, break them into groups of size 3, you will be able to make 58 such groups, and then there will be le one left over. Each one of these numbers has a name. This number is called the dividend. Dividend. That is the number which is being divided. <coughs> The number of groups you were able to construct is called the quotient. The size of the groups that you were making is called the divisor. And then what was left over when you were finished is the remainder. So this is all review from third grade, <laughs> or whenever it was that you saw this the first time. Uh, so <clears throat> there is a special case that is singled out, and that is when the remainder is zero, the divisor is called a proper divisor. Or a factor. Okay, so I could ask then, using this terminology, is 3 a proper divisor of 175? It is not. Why not? It has a, a non-zero remainder. Okay, is 3 a proper divisor of 36? Yes. What is the quotient in remainder when 36 is divided by 3? 12 and 0. The remainder is 0, therefore 3 is a proper divisor, or a factor, of 36. Okay. <clears throat> any question about any of that? So, also, I'd like to point out that should you ever find yourself teaching this to school-aged children, uh, one, of the, one of the most important things you can impress upon them is that when you are doing this, when you're doing this, you need to make sure that things vertically line up. That is to say, notice that that is the hundredths place, 
and they're all vertically lined up. The tens place are all vertically lined up. The ones place are all vertically lined up. If you don't vertically align things properly, then you could accidentally, say, subtract a tens place from a hundreds place or something like this. So whenever I'm teaching this to school age children, I encourage them to write their numbers a little bit further apart than usual. So instead of writing like, you know, instead of writing like 175 real close, I try and tell them, well, write it like this, 175, and that tends to help. Okay. So is everybody okay with this terminology? Because now we're going to have to use this terminology pretty fast and loose in a different context. Okay. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing, except we're going to do it with polynomials. Instead of dividing integers by other integers, we're going to divide polynomials by other polynomials. So here it is. Divide 2x cubed minus 3x squared uh, plus 4x plus 5. by x plus 2. So I'd like to point out that grammatically this is the exact same structure as the previous sentence, right? The previous one was divide 175 by 3. And this one is divide this thing by that thing. So grammatically they're exactly the same then algorithmically the way it's carried out is also more or less exactly the same. There's a house. The thing being divided goes in the house. 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. And the thing uh, doing the dividing goes outside the house. And now to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do, it's still just like on the previous page where we, c we were considering the most significant digits. Now there aren't digits, what there are is there's terms. So we're going to consider the most significant terms. What's the most significant term outside the house? It's this x. What is this the most, most significant term inside the house? This one, the leading term. So those are the two terms currently under consideration. So we're going to take these two terms, and we're going to pull them over here for consideration. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to divide the leading term inside the house by the leading term outside the house. So we'll do 2x cubed divide by x. So 2x cubed divide by x. Well, what is 2x cubed divide by x? 2x squared. This piece is called a partial quotient. So the individual pieces, the partial quotients, where do they get recorded? On the top. So we need to take this one over here. It gets put on the top, recorded for posterity. 2x squared. And then the 2x squared says, <laughs> realizes it's in a polynomial long division problem and it says, nah, I'm out, I'm leaving. Jumps off the house, hits the x plus 2 on the way down, so we'll make that product 2x squared times x plus 2. Well, what is 2x squared times x plus 2? 2x cubed plus 4x squared. Very good, 2x cubed plus 4x squared and now that we've made that product, where does it get recorded? 
under the dividend, right? So you write this right here, 2x cubed plus 4x squared. And then when we were doing integers, what do we do after we wrote the thing down here? Subtract. subtract. Now we're going to subtract a polynomial that has multiple terms. Because there are multiple terms, you must parenthesize so that you remember to subtract all of them instead of just the first one. Now, one thing I'd like for you to observe is that after we do this subtraction, how many cubes will there be? Zero, Zero of them, which is the whole point. If there were any cubes after this step, that would mean that you had made an error. Just like, just like when we were doing this, and we were asking, well, how many three, threes can you take away from 17? It's got to be 5. As a result, notice that the leading 1s will cancel. You have 10 and 7 minus 10 and 5. The 10s cancel. The cubes must cancel. So after performing that subtraction, negative 7x squared, and then carry down the 4x and the 5. Any questions so far? Okay, that's one round. Now the next round. Again, it's always considering the leading terms inside and outside. So what is now the leading term inside? All right, this one. So we're going to take this one, the leading term inside and the leading term outside, and we're going to spirit them over here for some work. Specifically, we're going to do negative 7x squared and then divide by x. Well, what is negative 7x squared divided by x? Negative 7x. This thing that we just made is called a partial quotient. Where do the partial quotients get recorded? At the top. Then, negative 7x squared jumps off the house, hits the divisor on the way down. That is negative 7x squared minus 14x. This gets recorded under the current dividend, negative 7x squared minus 14x. And what are we supposed to do with it now that we recorded it there? Subtract. Yeah, we've got to subtract it. So be sure to parenthesize it, because you're subtracting all of it. So how much square will there be after we do this? None, right? Which is the whole point. So then, what do I need to write? What's the subtraction then? 18x, and then carry down the 5. <clears throat> Any question to here? Now what? <laughs> Round 3, right? <laughs> okay. The leading term inside is 18x. The leading term outside is x. So then we'll take this 18x spirit it over here for some work also with the leading term outside we'll do 18x divide by x which is 18 a partial quotient partial quotients get recorded at the top And then they jump off the house and hit the divisor on the way down. So 
So that would be 18x plus 36. This gets written under the current dividend. And then it must be subtracted. So we parenthesize it to remember to subtract all of it. Notice that there are no more x's. And now we have negative 31. The leading term inside the house is now negative 31. Now what? So now we, mu now we must stop. This is where you finish. So when, when you are doing the M&M problem, when there's 20, you can take away a group of 3. Then there's 17. You take away a group of 3, 14. You take away a group of 3, 11. You take away a group of 3, 8. You take away a group of 3, 5. You take away a group of 3, 2. Then what? Then you must stop because you can take no more groups of three now. So the stopping condition for polynomial division is the following. What is the degree of the divisor? One. And then when the process began, what, is the, what was the degree of the dividend? Three. Can you take one from three? You can, and you must. Then the dividend, what was the degree? 2. Can you take 1 from 2? You can, and you must. Then it was degree 1. Can you take 1 from 1? You can, and you must. Then now, this is degree 0. Can you take 1 from 0? You cannot. This is where the process terminates. So, this here, this thing, is degree 1, and here, this is degree 0. So that's where you terminate. <coughs> and I could ask, well, for this division, what is the quotient? Right, the thing that we recorded on the top. What is the remainder? Negative 31. And now we can combine all four of these polynomials into a single sentence that is analogous to this one. So would you please write that sentence? Okay, so then it is 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5, the dividend, is the quotient. 2x squared minus 7x plus 18 multiplied by the divisor and then plus the remainder. So I have a question for you. Is x plus 2 a factor of 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5? Or a proper divisor? It is not, because there is a non-zero remainder. So x plus 2 is not a factor of that polynomial. Notice that if the remainder was 0, then that would be saying that this polynomial factors like that. But the remainder is non-zero, so it does not factor like that. <coughs> so my, I guess my comment about this is, um, isn't this terrible? <laughs> this is just terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Look at all of that. It's, it's a mess. Uh, it kind of reminds me of watching football with John Madden, right? So much going on here. Okay, so we're going to do another one of these, and it's going to be even worse.
gonna be it's gonna be even worse. Okay, that okay, we'll deal with that. But this one, at the end of the by the end of the lecture, I will show you a way that you could do exactly this computation using about that much space and in about ten seconds. And that's gonna be pretty nice, isn't it? That's gonna be better than this. Okay. But you need to know how to do it this way. Because the next one that I do cannot be done in the short way. It just has to be done the long way. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. So now the question is, please divide divide um, 5x to 3 plus uh, 4x to 2 plus 8 by x squared plus 1. Okay, so now, um, remember what I said about the integer problem. I, I said this right here. I said, whenever you're carrying this out or teaching young children how to carry it out, it's very important to keep things vertically aligned so that you don't accidentally subtract tens places from hundreds places or something like this. Okay. There's an, there's an analogous issue at play for polynomials. And it is illustrated here. Notice that the way I wrote this computation, I kept the cubes vertically lined up. And I kept the squares vertically lined up. And the degree one terms vertically lined up. And the constants vertically lined up. Now, on the exercise that I've just set, I have purposefully set you up to to cause a vertical alignment problem. What what thing have I done to cause a vertical? In fact, I want to change this. Sorry, I want to change this to x like that. So this this was formerly a two, and now it's a one. So what uh, what have I done to cause a vertical alignment problem? Right. So here, there's no squares. And here, for this one, there's no degree 1. So the way that you make sure that you get this part right is you have to write the, the missing terms in, but with zeros. That is to say that what is inside of the house <coughs> is 5x cubed and then plus... 0 x squared that's how many x squareds there were and then plus 4x plus 8 so does everybody see what I mean by the missing terms what this does is it gives you a column of space in which to write the squares so that they'll line up and similarly for the divisor x squared plus 0x plus 1. <clears throat> Any questions before we begin? So it's exactly the same procedure as before now. The leading term outside is x squared. The leading term inside is 5x cubed. We take them over to the side to, perf to calculate a partial quotient. So 5x cubed divide by x squared is 5x. That is our partial quotient. The 5x goes to the top to be recorded. Then the 5x jumps off the house and hits the divisor on the way down. 5x times x squared plus 0x plus 1 
and then that gets recorded under the current dividend. So 5x cubed, and now if I hadn't written zero, then there could be various alignment problems. Okay, so 5x squared, blah, blah, let's see. <laughs> so z plus 0x squared <coughs> plus 5x. So I wrote, I wrote it under there, and now what? Now we subtract, and so we parenthesize to make sure that we subtract all of it, <coughs> and then uh, notice that how many cubes are left? No cubes, right? Which is the point. And then, just as a nice coincidence, observe also that there's no squares. And then what remains is mm, what? Negative x plus 8. So now what? Now we stop. Why do we stop? Why can't we take anymore? Right. So this is now the leading term. What is the degree of the leading term in, inside? This is degree 1. And what is the degree of the divisor? 2. Can you take 2 from 1? You cannot. So you can write down the quotient. So what's the quotient? 5x. And what's the remainder? Negative x plus 8. And then uh, we can write down all four of these, the dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder in a single sentence. So how do they get written down all together? So it would be the dividend, 5x cubed plus 4x plus 8 is the quotient multiplied by the divisor plus the remainder. <coughs> Any question about this? <laughs> I made this one too easy on accident. I had intended for there to be more than one round, but whatever. I think you get the idea. <coughs> OK. So is x squared plus 1 a factor of 5x cubed plus 4x plus 8? It is not, because the remainder is, is that. If the remainder was 0, if it wasn't there, that would be saying that this polynomial factors like that. But it's not that way. Any question about this? So now, I made a pretty big promise. I said that this computation, this first one that we did, apparently, can be done in about that much space and in about 10 seconds. Okay, now I have to make good on that promise. But in order to do that, I've got to, I've got to s do something that's going to seem sort of non sequitur. Like it's going to, it's going to be surprising that we're talking about this at all. Okay. So let f of x be. 5x cubed uh, plus 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. And what I want you to do with this f is I want you to evaluate it at 2. So nothing, nothing tricky. I just want to know what, what happens when you plug in 2. Well, in the interest of time, 
<coughs> I could say, okay, well, to plug in 2, that's 5 times 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 6. 5 times 8, that's 40. 2 times 4, that's 8. 4 times 2, that's 8. And that's a 6. Combining these two is 48. Combining the next two is 14. Combining those two is 62. So you get 62. And then what if I said, OK, for this polynomial, I want you to evaluate it at the following 500 places. And you don't get a calculator. You've got to do it by hand. And you've got to do it really quick. I need it like today. Wouldn't that be t <laughs> so? People just you, know, you can just forget it. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Here's an interesting fact: is that um, a computer could do this. You know, could do all of them. You know, as soon as you hit enter, before your next heartbeat, it's finished, easily. Okay, that's nice. Before there were computer <coughs> machines, the silicon devices that we make, there were computer people whose professions literally were computer. Like someone could say, I'm a teacher, and the next person says, I'm a janitor, the next one says, I'm a doctor, and the next one says, I'm a computer. Like that used to be the way the word was used. Because what it, what it was is that, is that people would organize computations and say, well, I need this. I need to do this computation, and, and but they wouldn't want to do it. They'd pay someone else to sit down and do all kinds of arithmetic. A, an extreme, a notable one where there was an extreme number of computers, people uh, employed is uh, in World War II when the United States developed nuclear weapons. That was before computers. That is to say, silicon computers. It was before then. So then, the way that was actually done is a bunch of physicists and mathematicians got together and said, okay, well, if it is possible to make a physical, to make a physical device, a nuclear weapon, then it must be constructed in a way that satisfies these differential equations. So they wrote down these differential equations, and then they made an enormous computation. Uh, a computation, they said, well, we need computers to compute the following I don't know how many, probably tens of millions of operations. So they literally hired thousands of computers, and people sat down and performed things just like this for months. And then they took that answer and constructed <laughs> nuclear weapons. Okay, so, so let's ignore that sort of unsavory part and just understand that there used to be people called computers. And this is not the way that, that you would evaluate a polynomial, that a computer, a human computer, would do it. There's better ways to do it. So what's the best way to do it, you might ask? What's the fastest way that a human being can evaluate a polynomial? It's not this way. So what I'm going to show you is a way to reorder the evaluation. <clears throat> and that is Okay. For this polynomial, observe that except for the last term, except for that 6, they've all got an x, right? So I'm going to factor the x out of all of them except for that 6. So if I do this, it would be x and then plus 6 here. And then what do I need to write in the parentheses? <coughs> Very good, so 5x squared uh, plus 2x plus 4. And then now, inside of these parentheses, do you observe that except for that 4, they've all got an x. So let's factor the x out. So that would be x, x. Uh, like this, and then plus 4, and then plus 6. So what do I need to write in the square parentheses to make it right? 5x plus 2. 5x plus 2. 
And now, inside of the square parentheses, I'd like for you to observe that except for that 2, all the terms have an x. <laughs> now, that seems weird, but well, let's just continue. Okay, so then I'm going to factor it out. So x times x times x. And then what do I need to write in the curly parentheses to make it right? A 5. OK. Now, the, the effect of the parentheses is that it, it, it makes the order of operations different. So what must occur if I wanted to plug in 2 now into this as it's written? What would I have to do first? 2 times 5. So, watch what will happen when you try to plug in 2. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, plus 4 is 28, times 2 is 56, plus 6 is 62. The whole thing can be done in your head by alternating multipl multiplications and divisions, multipl uh, multiplications and additions. Multiply, add. Multiply, add, multiply, add. If you wanted to plug in 3, 3 times 5 is 15, times 3 is 45, plus 2 is 47, times 3 is 100 and 41. <laughs> took me a second there, and then plus this, you get it. Okay. So there's people who can do it quite rapidly. Now, if all that we're using is the parentheses to change the order, well, we don't really need to write the parentheses. Let's just make a table that helps us do it in the right order. So notice that when we're doing this, which, which number do we use first? The 5. <coughs> and then we'll use the 2, and then we'll use the 4, and then we'll use the 6. So if we do that, I'm going to write a little table here. I'm going to write it in this style. And I use the 5 first, then the 2, then the 4, then the 6. Notice that those are the coefficients of the polynomial. 5, 2, 4, 6. And then where did we want to evaluate? At 2, right? So I'm going to signify that we want to evaluate at 2 by writing a 2 down here. So that's where we want to evaluate. So those are the coefficients of the polynomial, and that's where we want to evaluate. Then we need to alternate multiplies and adds. So which, which occurs first? The, the multiply. So all these numbers are all now in the house. And 5 wants to escape. So 5 sneaks out the window. But then, then 5 realizes, oh, it's not a good idea to run away from home because now I'm hungry. And 5 wants to come back in, but who's guarding the door? 2. So to get back in, 5 gets multiplied by 2. What is 5 multiplied by 2? 10. 10. So we get a 10 here. And now 2 and 10 want to sneak out. So we add them together and get 12. But now 12 wants to come back in. But who's guarding the door? 2. So the 12 comes back in as a what? as a 24. And now 24 wants to sneak out with the 4. So we add those together to get what? 28. 28 wants to come back in, but 2 is guarding the door. 2 times 28 is 56. And then we add 56 and 6 to get what? 62 which is the evaluation that we were looking for. That's the answer. So what this is saying <coughs> is that f evaluated at 2 is 62. This is the fastest way to evaluate a polynomial by hand. Any question about this? Now, could someone please remind me, what was it that we were trying to do? Divide polynomials, and somehow we went down this rabbit hole for, for reasons that are not entirely clear yet. 
What we want to do is we want to be able to do this computation more quickly. And so I'd like for you to look at the numbers 2, negative 7, 18, and negative 31. And I'm going to ask you a different question. I'm going to ask a question. I'll say let, <clears throat> let f of x be the polynomial 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. And I want you to evaluate at x is negative 2. But I want you to do it, do it using that table thingy that we just did. OK. So what goes on the top row? 2, 3, 4, 5. And who's guarding the door? negative 2. And so now, you evaluate this by alternating multiplies and adds, with multiply go for going first. So you take the 2, and then you multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So what is the answer to f evaluated at negative 2? It's negative 31. And that's nice. However, wait a second, do you recognize any of those numbers? <coughs> What was the quotient of this division? 2x squared minus 7x plus 18. And then these numbers, wait, 2, negative 7, 18, negative 31. Not a coincidence. So 2, negative 7, 18, negative 31. It is not a coincidence that this is occurring. So what this is, what I'm telling you is that this whole crazy computation that we did right here is summarized entirely right there. And it is reasonable, I think, for me to say that you could, you could fill out this table in about 10 seconds with enough practice. Interesting. Any question about this one? OK. <clears throat> so now we can say the punchline. So this tabular method to evaluate a polynomial is called Horner's method. And its purpose is to evaluate a polynomial. That's what, that's in, it, that's what his, its historical purpose was. It's the fastest way for a human being to evaluate a polynomial. It's more or less the fastest way for a machine to evaluate a polynomial also. But as a nice side effect, as a nice side effect, these coefficients right here are also the quotient of a division. That is to say that 
if you evaluate f of x at x is equal to c, this is equivalent to divide f of x <coughs> by x minus c. That is to say, on the first page, what did we divide by? We divided by x plus 2. And then where did I ask you to evaluate? At negative 2. Evaluating at negative 2 is the same as dividing as x as dividing by x plus 2. Evaluating at 5 is the same as dividing by what? x minus 5. Evaluating at negative 10, the same as dividing by x plus 10. Very interesting. So we'll con continue this thought experiment on Friday. Have a nice Wednesday.